Um, so maybe it would be the pros, but which team in the pros, I, I have no idea who that could be. Well, the only thing more prestigious job would be uh, Alabama, and we know Nick Saban's not going anywhere. Mo, I know you cover right. the Chicago Bears on a regular basis. That's kind of your world, your neighborhood, if you will. The Chicago Bears dotted some eyes across the T's in the three seasons. Are you happy with it going forward into to opening day? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, with the addition of Khalil Mack, I think, uh, yeah, you know, you, you've got a, a young offense that's growing together. You still could always want more weapons uh, at the wide receiver position. But, uh, you know, if they pull off this uh, this Khalil Mack trade, I think that, uh, that definitely, um, you know, the Bears sending a couple first-rounders to get Khalil Mack I think is a no-brainer. And, you know, I, I, wish, uh, I wish the Colts would have <laughs> jumped into that too. You know, we saw Cleveland, that they could have possibly been in there. But uh, I think the pickup of Khalil Mack I think has to – to bring a lot of confidence there to Hallis Hall. And I think, uh, you know, maybe it changes the Bears' fortunes by maybe a game or two. Uh, you got a very, guy who's very vocal on the field, a guy who uh, is everywhere uh, making tackles. And I think that only steps up, at, at, you know, the level of your defense. Now he'll have to get acclimated to, to their plays and their scheme. So I think it takes a few weeks. We hope that uh, Mitch Trubisky obviously takes another step forward. Uh, you got to still like the running game and the offensive line the Bears have built. So, you know, I, I think, um, you know, Week four, week five, when uh, when Khalil Mack's been there and been back in shape, I think that uh, you can see a pretty ferocious defense as the uh, weather turns cold at Soldier Field. Okay, guys, that will be for, well, we still got a few more minutes here before we have to wrap up and put a bow on it for today. I wanted to get some thoughts, and maybe opinions is probably the better thing than, than thoughts or facts on this. It's a very sensitive uh, topic, so I want to be careful about how I, I – approach it. But what I want to do is talk about Bob Lamey being forced out by the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, for those that may not have heard the story, this has had a ripple effect all the way down to his son, uh, who races IndyCar and NASCAR and had a, a sponsorship removed uh, from this. All of this circulated and started here in Indi- Indianapolis, but it has been a huge national story. So walk you through this if you don't know what happened, Bob Lamey. Announcer for the Indianapolis Colts. He's been there for 30 some odd years. An icon, a legend. Um, told a story about Derek Daly, which is a race car driver, race car analyst here in Indianapolis. Uh, his son is Connor Daly. He raced in Formula One. Uh, he came over 30 some odd years ago to race in IndyCar. Uh, his, he was, had an interview. Uh, with an American reporter, they asked him, and, this, and I listened to Derek Daly's interview here locally, um, and his story didn't change on national affiliates either that covered this story. So I believe his story, the question was asked. Again, he was from Europe. It was a different time then, and it has a different meaning and connotation in Europe than what it does here. I will not use the word, but I will insert the word microphone. So the question was asked, to Derek, uh, Derek Daly, what's it feel like to be on an American team, to be in America, what's it feel like? His response was, honestly, I feel like I'm the microphone in the wood pile. So not microphone, but N-word was used. Ro- uh, Robin Miller, who now uh, reports for Bracer Magazine but was with Indianapolis Star for many years covering IndyCar, goes, which if you know Robin Miller, he has no filter so the fact that he would say this to him, it's pretty serious. He goes to, after the interview, he told Derek Daly, he goes, never use that word again here in the United States. It has a completely different meaning. He learned his lesson. He never used that word ever again. It is a very common phrase in Europe, okay? So fast forward here. In turn, African-American, again, not that that matters. I just want to put everything into context. Young, still in college. Worked intern for the Indianapolis Colts radio network, overheard Bob Lamey talking about this story to a very seasoned um, reporter here in town. It was just a conversation um, that was spawned over other things, uh, predominantly about LeBron James' barbershop and just different things, Tiger Woods' comments, different things. They were just having a com- conversation. Overheard conversation, said intern, went to HR with Emmett, which is not who Bob Lamey is employed by, uh, but it is the flagship for the Colts. They turned the case over to the Colts. The Colts said, hey, go ahead and retire. We're going to pay your full pension. We're just going to announce that you retired. Well, I tweeted out 
on the balance. I, I think I talked with you guys. I said, that, this does not pass the smell test. Bob Kravitz uh, with WTHR.com uh, here in Indianapolis broke the story. You might also know that he's the guy that broke the deflate gate story here in Indianapolis. So very well known covering with Peyton Manning. Broke the story that what I just told you. So after that story was broke, Derek Daly was then fired by CBS here as, as a racing analyst was then fired. After that, um, Connor Daly, Derek Daly's son, sponsorship Eli Lilly, which is based here in Indianapolis, was pulled from his race car. He is now kind of looking for a ride in IndyCar and or NASCAR. Also, um, he was in the amazing race, uh, and either he, his the, the episodes with him are no longer going to be played in reruns. So I know that's a long story. I know that's a long-winded story. But we have got to the point of things just getting to be ridiculous. Again, Derek Daly, 30 years ago, in an interview, one time, and was referring to himself, it was not racist. This has gone over the top. We'll start with you, Ed. What are your thoughts? Then we'll get yours, Mel. Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, uh, you know, your, your, your explanation aside, I'm not really that versed as to what kind of happened. And, I, you know, it's just the way things are today, right? I mean, it's just the way uh, America is today, and, you know, people are sensitive to that. And, um, you know, I, I guess yeah, I guess I really don't have an opinion. I just think that uh, it happened and, you know, you, you move on from it. You know, I know it's a long career that uh, the announcer had, but, you know, you, you move on. You know, he, he made a mistake. He got hurt. And, uh, it's just, just the way things go, I guess, in, in, in today's America. Well, the problem with today's America is two broadcast legends' career is ruined over a out of a comment that was made 30 years ago, referring to himself, not in a racist comment. And now the third generation uh, race car driver uh, in re- reality star TV, Connor Daly, who wasn't even born at the time, is now suffering the backlash from this. That's the problem with modern day America. But what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, I mean. I understand that things were different back when uh, when Derek Daly told the story and, and and you know in Bob Lamey's day, but uh, you know I agree with that. I think you know even uh, regardless of your age or if you're in the media these days, you know I have to deal with it every day. I have to be cognizant of everything I say nowadays because I have to. I understand uh, you know what uh, what things are now and what the rules are and and people's level of tolerance now. So. You know, what I did on the radio even in 20 years ago, I can't do the same show that I did that I do today. Uh, so, you know, it, it's sad that the, <clears throat> Bob Lemmy's career had to uh, end like this, uh, you know, and the same for uh, for Derek Daly and Connor Daly. Uh, I feel a little worse, I think, for Connor, who had nothing to do with any of this story, uh, but uh, but uh, had to take some of the brunt of, of it. But, you know, again, for those for those guys, uh, you know, I think you need to realize where you are today, uh, you know, and, and, and people's reaction to things. It, it, are people too sensitive at times? Maybe, but uh, you know it's, that's the world we live in today. And and I, you know, especially as a full time broadcaster, that's what I ha- I have to be cognizant of that every single day. So it, it's it's changing with the times. And I think that uh, you know that uh, unfortunately for those guys, some things didn't change, and and now they both are out of a job. Yeah, it's unfortunate that Bob Lemmy did repeat the story, and then just didn't maybe he didn't have to use the word even if he was repeating the story. It was just in a casual conversation with other reporters. I think what bothered the intern the most is he asked the intern, "Are all of our microphones off?" Well, that was something that's pretty common that you ask at the end of a broadcast. We know that that are in radio. We want to make sure everything's off. She kind of took it as he wanted to make sure all the mics were off. There was no hot mic. As we know, every mic is a hot mic. She took it as he, he knew what he was going to say, and he wanted to make sure there was no hot mic. So it's unfortunate that it unraveled that way. But as Ed said, it's, it's the world that we live in. We've only got a few minutes. We've got to put a, wrap, uh, a bow on it wrap it up. We'll start with you, Ed, going into uh, NFL. And our fantasy drafts this weekend. I know, Mo, you and I have our balance draft tomorrow. I have one today. What are your thoughts? Who are the studs? Who are the duds? As we go and get ready for fantasy football drafts. 
Uh, well, I, I'm not a fantasy guy, but you know, you got to get a quarterback first, right? I mean, that's probably where you where you have to go with your first pick. I would be careful with Carson Wentz um, drafting him. I, I'm not sure if he's going to start the season. Nobody's sure at this point. We should know soon before, obviously, before Thursday. But uh, even if he plays, I'm not sure at what level he'll play at. I'm not sure it'll be the same as last year, so I'd be careful with him. Um, I think Saquon Barkley will have a nice season. Uh, You know, he could be a high pick. But, uh, you know, as far as other guy, I mean, you could just go down the long list here. Uh, You know, do you still have confidence in Tom Brady that he'll get things done? Probably. Gronkowski's a a, you know big name player. Uh, You know, busts. I'm not so sure. Bust. Dak Prescott would he be considered a bust if you drafted him? I don't know. Eli Manning, I think probably could have a good year with uh, Happy Odell Beckham. I think Odell Beckham should be drafted high. I think he'll have a great year. Um, But not being a big fantasy guy, I don't really you know have this list of guys to you know. To, to read off that it would be busts or, or, or uh, you know, breakout guys. <laughs> Mo, I know uh, you are in our fantasy league, and uh, we have drafts tomorrow. So you don't have to tip your draft strategy, but going into uh, your fantasy football drafts, what are you looking at? Uh, I'm looking for value. You know, and I think a lot of times, it, it, we know, the NFL season just overall is a war of attrition, and I think I'm looking – uh, you know, to, to stock up a good bench. I think that's where you see people separate themselves each and every year is when you're able to uh, to separate and, uh, you know, put uh, a good bench together. So I'm looking for some value picks in, in, you know, in some late rounds. And there are some Cleveland Browns on that list. You know, there are uh, uh, a few others from a few other teams. You know, there's a few sleepers, I think, on the Bears this year as well. Um, you know, there, a, a guy who did very well for me in, in the past couple of years is a guy like Zach Ertz uh, at tight end. You know, people jump for Gronkowski and Kelsey right away. I think uh, there's a lot of value in Zach Ertz, obviously, from uh, from his performance uh, last year and especially in the Super Bowl. So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, don't be don't be distraught if you don't, uh, you know, get some of the number one guys at their position. I think the, the draft uh, could be pretty deep this year. Uh, and again, you know, look for look for value picks. If you can't get the number one or two guys, there's always great guys out there. And I, I think Zach Ertz will prove to be that uh, again this year. Well, guys, it's time for a thumbs up, thumbs down. Last week I was at the Indianapolis Colts game. Great showing. Got to see Luck run a little bit. Great win against the 49ers. They went three and one in the preseason. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down? The Indianapolis Colts win nine games this season. Uh, Ed, thumbs down. Too tough a division. Thumbs down. Still All trying right. to Mo, replenish that roster. Yeah. Mo, thumbs up, thumbs down. The Colts win nine games this season. Uh, thumbs down. I agree with that. The division's too tough, and I think the Colts are going to be absolutely horrific on defense this year. Even with the return of Andrew Luck, and if he stays healthy and gets protected, I still think you know you're in a situation like you were in the early years of Peyton Manning, where you're going to have to score 40 or 50 points to win the football game because the defense is that bad. Uh, so I say thumbs down. Well, you know, I am going to disagree just because I'm going to be a homer on this. Uh, I think that they could easily win between seven and eight games. I don't think there's any arguments there. So we're just talking about one other game. Now, they're going to be very busy over the next 48 hours. They have to get their right guard in place. That is going to be a big problem. That is going to be an Achilles heel. And you're right, Mo, the defense is atrocious at the moment. But I have wishful thoughts as well. Well, guys, uh, we're going to have to wrap it up. Put a bow on it, Ed. Where can people find your work and your masterpieces as we go into 2018? Uh, just follow me on Twitter, at Kratzee, K-R-A-C-Z-E. All right, Mo, where can people find your work and your masterpieces? Uh, I have no masterpieces, so I just follow Ed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. That's what, that's what I was Thanks, doing. Thanks, Follow in. All right, guys, you have yourself a great Labor Day weekend, uh, doing whatever you're going to do, barbecuing, drinking some beer, or what have you. And uh, well, let's get ready for a great uh, 2018 NFL season. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Mo.